Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. EK has just released a stack of new all-in-one liquid coolers, so in regular old Gear Seekers fashion, I'm going to show you how to install them. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new EK Nicholas CR240 Lux cooler in an AMD AM4 and AM5 based desktop system. Let's install the thing. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review of this new EK cooler. Every system, motherboard, case, fan placement, and setup is different. So make sure you research what will actually fit in your case before buying any new parts for any PC builds. Now, this guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the EK Nucleus CR240 Lux on an AMD based desktop motherboard. This includes every Ryzen desktop CPU and motherboard combo since the launch of Ryzen. The only difference is really the backplate and I'll talk about that a little bit later. This basically includes every AMD socket that you're gonna ask about in the comment section down below. So make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because I'm probably gonna answer most of those questions right here in this video. So. Let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite AX. The case is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. And this video is not a discussion about pricing or performance of this cooler at all. It's purely how to show you how to install it if you're having problems installing it. The case was chosen as it's one of the easiest cases for us to film with. It's nice and open and I can get to it from every angle with the camera. The Intel version of this video will release shortly or it's probably already out maybe by the time that you're watching this video, but there's a link in the description for that version of that video if it's out whenever it's out. And yes, this EK cooler will work with every Intel and AMD CPU and motherboard combo that you're going to ask about in the comments from probably the last 13 or so years into the foreseeable future. Yes, this will work on your AMD AM4 motherboard because AM4 and AM5 installation steps are exactly the same in the case of this cooler. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances in your case. You can't actually install a liquid cooler in the top of this case, which is why it's in the front in this video. Yes, the cooler and fans have RGB and it's fully addressable RGB as well. Yes, your motherboard does require RGB to use the lighting and the cooler and all the fans and everything that lights up. Yes, both fan cables need to be plugged in because either the fans won't spin or they won't light up. Yes, you can put whatever fans you like on this cooler, but this video is only showing the fans that come with this. So make sure you do your research before doing any other types of fans and whatnot. Yes, everything that you're seeing in this video is included in the box, except the PC and all the PC hardware. Yes, this guide also applies to the CR360 Lux version of this cooler as well. And you can use this as a bit of a reference for that cooler if you've got that cooler. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion or any RGB software that you've got to use for your motherboard. Yes, the thermal paste is pre-applied. However, if you need to reinstall this cooler, there's a little tube of thermal paste included as well. So you can do that again if you need to. Yes, the pump top and the logo on the top is rotatable. I'll show you how to do that later in the video. No, you don't need to fill up this cooler before using it. No, you don't need to change the liquid. You don't need to do anything in regards to the cooling of this at all. It's an all-in-one closed cooler. So let's see what you get in the box. All right, here it is, the EK Nucleus CR240 Lux. Let's do our usual thing. Let's see what's in the box and what you need for insulation for an AM4 slash AM5 system. First up, we've got the user manual. We also have the mounting hardware, the back plates, the cables, and all the thermal paste in this nice little slide out box. And as you can see here, everything is divided up nicely and everything is very easy to find and it's organized very, very well. Inside this little orange box though, is all of the back plates and everything that you're going to need for installation. So I think I'll show you what they are. First up, we've got the Intel back plates. Now this is for LGA 11.5X and LGA 1700, although we won't be covering that in this video. Yep, yeah, that's what they are. And there's also the mounting brackets for AM4 slash AM5 and Intel mounting as well. So everything that you need to get this installed is included in the box. There's also two included ARGB fans. Now these 
these are actually daisy chainable something new for ek they haven't done this before and here is the cooler itself now this version is the 240 millimeter version of the liquid cooler there is a 360 mil version as well which this guide will also apply to but this is all of the required mounting hardware that we're going to need for installation. So we need those nuts. <laughs> There's also four screws to mount the bracket to the cooler itself. There's a little tool to help you fasten everything up and obviously the AM4 slash AM5 mounting bracket. Okay, let's get this started. First up, what we're wanting to do is remove the factory mounting hardware. Now there's four screws that hold the plastic mounting hardware in. Basically what we're wanting to do is remove all of those screws and keep these because if you need to install another cooler another time, you might actually need these, but yeah, just remove them because we won't be requiring these for the EK cooler installation. Now locate these mounting screws. There are four in total. And what we're going to do is then just fasten these into the holes on the back plate that is pre-installed on the board. Now this also applies to AM4. However, just be aware that your back plate might fall away. Now locate this mounting tool. And this basically allows us to finger tighten those bolts in a little bit easier because it's kind of hard to get your finger in there sometimes. Now locate four of the mounting screws and the mounting bracket, which is the AIM4 slash AIM5 mounting bracket for this cooler. And what we're going to do is pull the cover off the cold plate, but don't touch the thermal paste because yeah, you're going to have to reapply it otherwise. And lower the bracket onto the cooler itself, making sure the holes are visible and get your screwdriver and screw in the four mounting screws into each corner. Now, basically just rinse and repeat this process until everything is in. Make sure you go and double check everything as you're doing this to make sure everything is tight enough. Let's get into fan and radiator insulation. Locate eight of the included fan screws that come in the box. And what we're going to do is then install the radiator into the case. Now, tubes down, tubes up, doesn't really matter here. This is for demonstration purposes only. We're doing it this way because it's easier to film. And just be aware though, this case, you cannot mount the cooler at the top. So we have to mount it at the front on this occasion. Now, what we're going to do is locate both of the included fans that come with the cooler. Now, what we're going to do is align the radiator to exactly where we want it to sit in the case and put the screw through the hole in the fan frame and fasten that to the radiator. I usually finger tighten this to make it easier and basically just rinse and repeat that process until all of the screws are in place. Then use a screwdriver to finally fasten everything up so it's nice and tight so it doesn't fall off. Now we're gonna connect the fan cables. Basically they only connect one way and make sure they clip into place without unplugging and if they're connected properly, they should look a little something like this. Now, locate the adapter cable that comes with this for the fans as well. I'm going to plug that adapter cable into one of the fans. It'll only plug into one, so that will be the correct one. Now, locate four of these nuts, or rather, these nuts. And what we're going to do then is lower the pump top in your design position onto that mounting hardware that we installed on the motherboard previously and you'll want to put a spring and a bolt into place. Now, finger tighten it just to hold it into place, and you'll want to rinse and repeat that process on each corner with the spring and screw. Um, basically, I usually do this in a diagonal pattern. Now, you can use a screwdriver here or finger tighten it, but I would recommend not over tightening everything, and the diagonal pattern is the way to go. Locate the PWM fan cable that is connected to the pump top, which is the part that we just installed onto your motherboard. And what we're going to do then is locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU opt or water pump. And we're going to plug it into that header on your motherboard. This will make the pump work. Now we're going to locate that three pin ARGB cable from the pump top. And what we're going to do then is locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard and plug that cable straight into your motherboard. Now we're going to get the other end of that cable. We're going to pull the cap off and we're going to pass that through to the back of the case. We're going to plug that in a little bit later. Now, this is the other end of the adapter cable that we plugged in previously. We're wanting to locate the PWM side. We want to pass that through to the front side of your case. 
What we're going to do then is locate a header that is labeled something like CPU fan or something similar. And we're gonna plug that cable right in to that connection on your motherboard right there. Lastly, on the back side of the PC, locate the remaining ARGB cables that we had from the adapter and from the pump top, and you'll want to plug them in together so the lighting will work. And that's basically it for installation. Lastly, if you want to change the logo orientation on the pump top, it's magnetic, so you can basically just lift it off and put it in any orientation you like, and you should be good to go. And if everything was plugged in correctly and you followed the guide step-by-step, step, it should look a little something like this. pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below. I'll link to that Discord down below in the description. But also make sure you read the comments because myself or probably someone else may have already answered your question. And I'm only saying that because I don't want you to waste your time. And if this video helped you, please let us know. But I'm sure that if it did, you probably will say it because you guys are awesome. And if you like this video and it helped you, like I already said, subscribe. Consider supporting us by clicking the join button to get the music that you hear here on the channel or get early access to videos like this one on Floatplan. And if you didn't like this video, the dislike button. How funny is that? Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nico Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and I hope you guys are having an amazing year so far. Thanks for watching.